How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass of Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of Monday Night Jams up in this piece in the form of their Lundy IPA. I don't know what Lundy means. Let's see if it says it on the can. Soft, elegant, and juicy. This is a 7.1% IPA. On the bottom it says, uh, Batch ID 1208FL, package 00319. Hmm. I'm getting big time there, Monday Night. Throwing those batch codes on there. It says, Best Buy, February 2020. We are good by that. And this actually comes from Monday Night Brewing. They sent this off along with proper glassware, but I'm an idiot and didn't bring that. And that's that. It doesn't sell much about it. I mean, Lundy must just be a name. I don't know what it means. But we're going to drink it anyway. So here you go. Give that a pour. Ooh, clear beer. Clear beer alert, baby. Oh, I love me some clear beer. So let's see how it pours. I know from a distance sometimes it kind of clouds up on, on it. But um, yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, that'd be clear beer. Yeah, look at that. Give it an old rub there so you can get right through it. I mean, there's ever so slightest bit of haziness on there. Picky finger, infinitely creamy, infinitely tight, compact bubble, white head. It's got that soft kind of, you know, slightly hazy yellow highlighter kind of vibe going for it. Very bright, very vibrant. Uh, Label-wise, it, you know, it's Monday night. They do the tie thing, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much what they do on all their beer cans, for the most part, uh, in IPA or, I don't want to say basic beer realm, but yeah, I mean, that looks like an IPA, not a new school IPA, but yeah, you talk about juicy on there, it's a soft, elegant, juicy Soft and juicy are very much um, kind of trigger words, are very much descriptors for haze and haze. Um, I know both of them. One is a mouthfeel. The other one is an actual taste. But, you know, when you think of soft and juicy, you do not think of clear beer. That's not to say that's not the case with this beer. That's what everybody thinks. So kind of cool to kind of go into it expecting that from that side in the nose. I mean, it's uh, orange peel. Orange lemon zesty peel. Not a big sweetness to it. It's more pithy than anything else. A little bit of fleshiness, nothing too crazy. Not too big of a sweet, not too big of a bittering. Even though there's a little bit of rindy, pithy bittering in there. And that's it. Going to be very orange leaning. Very citrus leaning here, but I don't think it's getting too far in the sweet nor bitter territory. Let's dive in. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a beer that I'm going to get really, really angry at for a couple different reasons. One, let's jump into Wayback Machine, fire it up and go back to maybe about like eight years ago. This is would be like, oh my God, this is crazy juicy. In today's world, this is neither soft nor juicy. It's soft in a sense, back then you'd be like, wow, the mouth feels very delicate. Um, uh, but as far as what everybody equates soft to nowadays, it doesn't really fit that bill. I think it's soft, but... The general descriptor doesn't really work in today's beer world. Uh, you're talking about juicy. Again, back in the day, this would be a very juice-leaning beer. And today, where beers literally come off just like fruit juice. Like, not like figuratively. Literally tastes like fruit juice. This is a bit more of a juicy version, juicy hopped version of a beer where the, a lot of those beers are like beers that absolutely mimic kind of fruit juice. Elegant kind of works here, though. Uh, it has a nice soft dryness to it. That pith kind of comes to a head, so it comes off a little bit more drying than what you'd expect. It has, and this is where I said I was going to get, like, really angry at this beer. This is when I'm going to drag out that old soapbox, get on top of it, and be like, this drinks like a sub-5% fucking beer. This is what I want in a freaking 15 rack, uh, and I want to go have a barbecue or one of my barn parties or one of those things. This is what I want. problem is 7.1 there's a little bit a little bit of heat in the back i mean ever so slightly so like okay i'm drinking something above five percent but as far as every other portion of the beer up into that final fucking gulp it just rings a five percent a lot of people really dig on that a lot of people would be like you've sold me now that's exactly what i want in a beer i want it to be nice drinkable giving me all these things but have an extra oomph to it and more power to you i'm not here to say that's wrong that's not negative i don't rate beers i don't say what's wrong or right well something's overtly fucked up but in the grand scheme of things the hill i die on is the low abv beer and this one is mimicking what a low abv beer gives you but has that higher abv so for me not something i would pick up all the time i would definitely bring this to a party 
You know, pick up a four pack, six pack of this, bring it to a party where people definitely are like, I like IPA, bring me some IPA. I like X, Y, and Z big beer brewery and bring them something that is a nice bridge between the new school kind of armchair IPA drinker and the kind of new school kind of haze bro. Um, I used to talk back in the day, and not back in the day, not too long ago, about how wheat beers were, really were a bridge between, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, beer in general, like macro beer and, and craft beer. It's how I get a lot of my friends in the beer. I would give them, like, you know, Wine Stefan or, or uh, you know, even a Blue Moon or Ho Garden, any of those beers, and it'd be a very gentle bridge from your macro lager to the craft beer world. This is kind of like the bridge within the IPA realm from either direction. I think you can give this to a haze bro, bring them down to the old school IPA, and I think they'd be okay with that vice versa i think you can give this to somebody that likes an old school ipa or just got into beer and they had a couple kind of you know goose islands those kind of thing lesions of the world and you want to kind of bridge them into the new school haze this is kind of floating in that middle ground so from that aspect it actually does a lot of things and it and it, and it, and it t takes a lot of boxes that i think people might dig um, all in all, I think it's a really well-made beer i like that I, I not even just like appreciate that bit of dryness that it gives but in the grand scheme of things, you know, when I see soft, elegant, juicy, it's elegant, but it doesn't really have that soft and juicy or what we know it as in today's beer world. So let's talk about it. Is this one of the better hazy or no, sorry, scratch it, juicy IPAs I've had as of late. And that kind of aspect of wouldn't even make it in the conversation. It's just a well done IPA. Absolutely. And I dig it. I like it. I think it's tasty. But in the grand scheme of things, just for me, the IB, IBV, ABV. IBV. What the hell is that? ABV is just a little bit too big for what I'm getting back as far as presentation and impact. Value to availability? No idea. I know Monday Night Brewing gets distro, not in my area, but in and around where I live, it does. So leave that for what it's worth and let you uh, leave you with, I should say, if you like what we like this. If you like uh, old school IPA, you like new school IPA, and you want to meet somewhere in the middle. That's pretty much all I got. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive. Want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little uh, Monday Night Jam right now. And hope to see you next time. Cheers.